recording is now officially running. So good morning, everyone. Good afternoon, evening to anybody who's joining from a different time zone. And we're happy to have you here celebrating with us our birthday and International Women's Day. We have a program of three hours with lots of cool content. We have talks, we have six talks, and we have two uh, breakout rooms and the two slots for breakout rooms. Each slot has five breakout rooms with different topics, which are pretty much the equivalent of our career mentorship um, sessions that we have in our in-person events. And what are you doing here? Who are we and how did you find yourself? A quick introduction about us. We are women tech makers and we started in Berlin in 2015. We are part of the Google developer groups and we are a group of volunteers that have the common goal of making the Berlin tech scene more diverse. Diversity means many things. It means gender diversity, it means uh, experience diversity, background, it can be where you come from, what language you speak, neurodiversity, how you look, and many other things. And we are a group of seven co-organizers and we host different events throughout the year. This is our Avengers Assemble or Power Rangers event of the year where we're all on board and we are working together to make this uh, extra long and extra fun event for you. And throughout the year, you see all sorts of events for us. For example, Android workshops, iOS workshops, JavaScript workshops, uh, how to write your, career, uh, your CV, how to interview better, how to be a better product manager, how to become a product marketing person, a wide range. Um, Content can be very technical, can be introductory level, or it can be non-technical, but still related to your career. And if you want any specific event, you can make a request, you can write to us, hey, I would love to see content about this, or hey, I would love to give an event about this content. And we always love collaborating, and we're happy to make such an event. Speaking of collaboration, we also have a calendar uh, of all the different tech communities that are focusing on diversity in Berlin. And uh, the purpose of this calendar is to make sure that you don't have five events on a Tuesday and the rest of the week is very empty. So shout out to all the different communities. At the end of the day, you will have a moment where we will introduce you to some of the cool communities out uh, here in Berlin and in the virtual sphere. And we will invite you to join them if you want to hear more about them. And to present the first speaker of the day, I will invite Kave to already share her screen, and I will invite my co-organizer, Corina, to uh, introduce our speaker. So see you all around. Thanks, Natalie. It's my great pleasure and honor to introduce Kave. Kave is a humanist at heart uh, whose work experience cross cut between the private and nonprofit sector and has influenced her interest in impact-based businesses, technology, leadership, people development, and diversity and inclusion. She's the founder of My Career Path, a leadership and career development organization for women based in Berlin with chapters and collaborations across the world. She currently works at Smart Recruiters as Director of Talent Acquisition and Diversity and Inclusion. She has also worked with some of Berlin's tech unicorns such as Zalando and 26, Career Foundry and Highbooks. She's a builder of communities, networker, and super connector at heart, as mentioned uh, in various magazines, bringing people together for the greater good um, is her core purpose in life. Something to add from me, Kave is one of, um, one of my, insp my most inspiring persons that I look up to in Berlin, and it's a huge pleasure to have her with us today. Kave, over to you. Oh, thank you so much for that kind introduction. I'm blushing right now, though you can't see it. <laughs> uh, and I was really honored to be invited again to speak at um, Women Takers Berlin, especially in this year where we are seeing a lot of challenges around the world when it comes to women, right? Um, and I was just thinking about the journey I've had with the community. I've been in Berlin for the last seven years now. Um, and I think I joined the tech industry six years, so like a year after just I then. And it's been such a, a transformative journey for myself um, and for many people that I've come across. And I will say Women Tech Makers has 
given me the, the space uh, and the courage to be who I am. And so everybody who's new, I send them to Women Tech Bakers. Like, you want to grow, you want to find out what out there, uh, you're looking for mentors, just join Women Tech Makers. And so this morning, as I was... Uh, you know, when I saw that I was the first speaker, I was like, oh my God, I'm the first speaker. What do I say? Um, and I really just wanted to talk about the journey that I myself have been going through as a woman. Um, I feel like 2021 has been a season where we've been brought into a space where we can no longer be silenced as women and a space where we recognize that intersectionality should be at the core of everything that we do with that that is um, that is across diversity the topic of diversity and inclusion and even for us women what does that mean when we talk about diversity and inclusion we have to think beyond just who we are beyond our careers beyond the context that we're in and um, for most times I've felt challenged um, especially when I see um, atrocities, violence, like severe violence targeted towards women um, in the world in general. And then you come to the various disparities that are also going on in the workspace. Um, I always wonder what kind of power and influence that I have actually to even shift one, you know, one little matchstick to make a difference. Because sometimes it can feel overwhelming that you don't know that you can actually make an impact like stories for example sarah in the uk like i'm in germany i feel so touched by it but at the same time i feel that i don't i don't know if i have much power to contribute to the change that women in the uk for example are going through and um after thinking and reflecting on this i came to the conclusion that actually as a person and as women, what makes us different and what really contributes to the world that we're living in is our stories. So I'm gonna share a little bit about how your story, your uniqueness really is the core of what you can bring to the world in order to make a difference. And that the fact that we are already enough. So let me share my screen. Yeah. So basically for me and for everyone here, all the women and men that are participating in this conversation, I really and truly feel that our stories and our journey and our journeys are the core in defining the kind of influence and impact that we make in the world. And most of the time, even though we try to look outside of ourselves to find things or people or anything external to kind of like hold on to and feel that that is the where the power lies I feel totally cold not really cold but I, I'm convinced that your story your journey where you come from the type of experiences that you've had either at home at work are really what you can use to change the world so I really wanted to say this morning that we are enough I am enough you are enough there's really nothing extra that you need to add in yourself in order for you to make a difference. And the other thing that I wanted to talk about or want to leave you with this morning is our collectiveness as women. Um, oftentimes, there, there could be discussions or conversations or spaces that makes us seem as if we're operating against one another. But I... I would love to encourage us to actually work together. Even if we're working on different topics where, you know, from different contexts, you know, I think what will really make us stronger as a community and as a people is how unite, united and how as a collective, we can actually work together to make an impact at home, at work, in our society. So let's continue to work collectively together. And then the last part is this intersectionality um, point that I highlighted in the beginning that every voice counts. 
And um, the reason why I say every voice counts is um, if I just have to reflect, for example, on what the Asian community is going through right now with um, anti-Asian racism that's going on around the world. Um, we normally we don't hear a lot of stories coming from the Asian community, but like we just we just don't see them a lot out in the public. But now we're kind of like put you know, at the forefront of what really is, is happening. And we kind of like waiting to hear a lot more voices from that community to come, come up and, see, and speak out. But, you know, what we have to realize is that when one community is marginalized, the other one is probably going to get marginalized, especially minority, when you talk about minorities or ethnic minorities and women in general. So when, for example, when women are speaking up, the other part of the, the of the collectiveness of this minority should not stand uh, should not stand by and kind of just watch because the next victim really of any kind of atrocity will be the next category of minority, and it's always important to kind of like join whoever it is within the minority group that is suffering or that is going through a certain kind of experience that is really not enabling them to live justly and equally to join them collectively. Because independently as a people, we cannot, we cannot really solve the, the challenges that we're facing as humanity at the moment. And so your voice counts. What you say right now to the Asian community, to women, to other ethnic minorities and the challenges that we're seeing right now in the world really, really matters. I wouldn't want anyone to feel and think, oh yeah, I'm not one of those people that are causing trouble or I really don't know what to say or I really don't know what but you know, what kind of impact I can have, I really feel like everyone and each one of us can have some form of impact, whether small or minimal, but find your own way to do it and make that contribution because it really does make a difference. So in a nutshell, this is what I think will make us stronger, will help us contribute to the world and you know really remaining authentically because this whole conference is about how to recreate yourself and i feel like within your authenticity as a person you don't really need to recreate yourself what you need to do is to draw within yourself and take all that is within you and take it out to the world so I would love to share the next slide, which tells you about how you can actually go on in making your story or start working on your story. Okay, where is the slide now? Just give me a second. Maybe you can unshare your screen and then, oh, okay. Sorry. Okay, <laughs> I just had to come here. Yeah, and so some practical ways how you can begin to discover or think of the journey that you would love to take in tapping into your story as a person is asking key critical questions. And those questions are what, why, who, where, when, and how. And then of course, these questions can either answer um, perspective from your personal life, from your work, from your business, and basically just like any really area that you feel called to or connected to that you would love to make a difference. So in terms of what, especially when we talk about careers, um, you can ask yourself questions, what services do I provide? As a, as a person or what is it that I do or what is my job in this in this case since most of us are, are still employees or are working um, or if we are considering or founding companies this could be questions that we ask and then the next thing will be what are my expertise what are you strong in what are you what are your expertise um, and the next thing will be the next question will be what are your strengths and weaknesses once you've answered these questions, the next thing you should answer or ask will be to describe why 
Why is it that you want to know these questions? And I think the idea at the end is the reason why you really want to discover what you should do is because you want to contribute in the sustainable or in the most impactful way. And so it is important once you discover what is it that you want to do, you have to also ask why you want to do it. And so to answer your why to every question that you've asked is to describe your vision, your values and viewpoints and why are they important to you. Again, this brings me back to the core of the beginning where I truly, truly believe that everything that you want to do or the impact you're gonna make in the world lies within you, the way you are brought up, the context within which you are brought up, really tapping inside and not really looking outside. And so your vision as a person, the view that you have around the world that we live in, the views that you have about women, minorities, our world technology, will really determine how successful you get to implement your why, your what, sorry. But also it will help you see, is there a match between my what and my why? And the next thing you should ask is who is your message targeting? As you know, right now we live in the most globalized world. Everybody is on the internet. And sometimes you might put out a content out there. Some people might receive it well. Some people might receive it not so well. There are many internet trolls and really a lot of things are going on out there. But when you are thinking about your journey and your story, you also have to kind of think, who do you want to speak to? Who do you want to talk to? You know, and who do you, because the person, the people you want to speak to somehow have a connection to who you are as a person. And so you want to ask, who do you aspire to become? Who are your biggest supporters? And who do you want to serve? These questions will really help you begin the small steps or the small journey, take the small journey to be coming the person who you already are but actually living that out loud unapologetically and i hope you can find that <laughs> a bit easy i know it's, I'm, I'm doing this really really fast but you have to see this as a journey and you don't need to answer all these questions like in one go in one month this is really a process that you have to go through um, over time in life and every stage that you are at really determines what question you should be asking now and then the next thing you should ask is where it's no doubt that most of us are working in the tech industry right now <laughs> and so you will probably find a lot of us um, building products uh, working with companies that are building products in the technology industry but also i'm sure there are other people who are outside of this field um, or industry so if you're already in an industry, if you are not in an industry, you also have to figure out where is it that you want to spend your career? Where, you, where is it that you want to spend your time, uh, your very real time as a, as a person, as a, as, a, as a strong contributor to our community? And you also have to ask, what kind of work environment do you like? This is really a critical question. And um, I think it comes after you've worked for quite many years, especially for us here in Berlin, the tech scene. Um, once we've had enough experience, we're kind of aware of the type of environments that we want to work in. But we also have to realize there are many people who don't have a choice in terms of determining what environment they want to be in. Perhaps it's just difficult for them to find another opportunity. And so they kind of feel stuck, you know, in the environments that they're in. But if you do have a privilege, please do ask, what kind of environment do I want to, to work in? And then lastly, what you want to ask is, what are some of the company values that I admire? Or even in this case, you can also ask values about countries, values about organizations. Basically, any institution, any context that you're in that has the power to influence the way we live and that you are somehow consciously or unconsciously contributing to. And you have to look at it and say, do I really 
belief or do I really want to be part of this movement, this organization, this society? Well, I don't think we have much choice on society, but at the same time, if we ask these questions about society, we can actually challenge um, the, the some of the values and the laws and the policies that are being made in the societies that we live in. Awesome. Next, before the last one, what you want to ask is when. I think when is such an important question because if you just look at 2021, a lot of things have happened. Um, everybody is probably going through some emotional challenges right now. Family, work, life balance, health, losing family members. There's a lot happening right now. And you want to be at a space where you're asking when for the right things. And, and even if you do ask when, you also have to realize that maybe maybe it's not now maybe you know maybe it's next year maybe it's five years from now but the reason why you should ask when is so that you actually make a plan around it and um, and that plan doesn't need to be static it could be really something that changes over time it's just really to have it as part of your journey and as part of your story because when you get to that point and you feel like yes this is the time, then you already have your one or you have already asked the, the right questions. Um, and so you wanna ask, when was the last time I felt, I felt empowered and motivated at work, at school, in life in general? And when was the last time I felt disempowered? And when was the last time I felt I was heard and seen? This is really, really important um, in an age where there's a lot of gaslighting and a lot of um, doubts on women, not believing women when they come forward. This is really a, an important question to ask. Um, and also ask, when was, the when was the last time um, I felt rejected? Now, it's good for all these questions really, the idea is for you to have a story that can guide you in every choice and decision that you're making in life, but also a story that can guide you in creating and founding and really influencing and making an impact. I don't think when you answer these questions, the idea is for you to have all of the answers right at the moment and get going. Remember that it is a journey where you can start and really begin in the smallest steps possible. Lastly, once we've discovered what, why, who, where, and when, we want to know how to get, you know, get out there and start telling the story or sharing the story. Um, and if it's career related, what we want to say or ask is, how do I structure my resume? How do I structure my profile? How do I create my website? For example, how, how do I get this, all of this insight that I've put together out there and which channel will be the most feasible for me? And so I just use resume in this case because we're in a career-centered um, uh, conference, but actually look at it an overall, like an overview or like a, look at it as a broad, a broader topic than just the CV, but look at it as a, an overall uh, topic. And the next thing you wanna see, how do, you, how do I find out um, opportunities that are there? And they, again, here I use jobs, but you could also see how do I find out opportunities about if I'm a founder, where do I find out opportunities about funding? How do I find out opportunities about volunteering? How do I find out opportunities to challenge laws and policies? How do I find out really opportunities that are there related to what is it that I really want to do based on my why and my what? And the last thing is you want to know how you want to create value for your audience. And honestly, for me, most of my latest journey has been really how I want to create value for our world. And more specifically, how do I create value for women and girls? Um, and I don't know what, what will be your, your personal how, like your personal audience, your personal 
context where you want to add value, but it would really be important for you to figure out how do you want to create value for that specific audience, because this value is the impact that you really want to make in the world. And then lastly, how would you like to define the success of your work? And I know that success means different things to different people. Um, and um, it can be so tricky to see it as a, you know, as, a, as an external, external tangible, you know, um, thing uh, to look at. But I actually see it more a lot about, I would actually even call it, how do you want to define the not really happiness or the contentment that you've contributed to our world, like, or at work, you know, it doesn't really necessarily think, be, need to be things that you touch on, but it can be really to see how your story and your journey has contributed to making the space that you're in um, a better place or a successful place. And how does that make you feel as a person? And so I've gone through all of this and I know it's a lot to take. And of course, the session is being recorded and I would encourage you to go through it over and over again to kind of figure out your what, your why, your who, your where, your when and your how. And I believe once you answer these questions, you will realize that there is really nothing external that you really need in your personal life to kind of make the difference that you need to make in our world. Everything, the answers are within yourself as a, as a person um, and as a woman. And so my encouragement is to, for us to tap inside ourselves and get it out and make an impact in our world. And that will be it for me for today. Um, you're welcome to ask me any questions. And if you get to go through this, um, I can help you or I can continue to share my journey or anyone who feels like they've gone through something like this um, to help others begin their journey in making this world a better place, but also in making everyone understand that we are already enough and we have the answers. So thank you. Thank you very much, Kave. Thank you. This was really, really inspiring. Um, I encourage our attendees to engage using using chat. I'm going to pass it now to Anna to introduce our our, our next speaker. Well, thank you again. Uh, um, truly inspiring, um, folks. You can uh, follow um, Kave on Twitter as well and engage engage with her there.